G'day guys, I'm Nat Brand, and this is the 2021 BMW M3. Here it is, the all new BMW M3, an iconic car with an iconic face or a disfigured face if you sit in that cam. Now, I reviewed the BMW M4 like last week or two weeks ago by the time you're watching this video. And to be honest, I really prefer the M3. Even though they're quite similar cars, the BMW M3 does have a few things going for it that I think you'll agree makes this a slightly better car. And in today's review, I'm gonna tell you why. So let's just get straight into it. The BMW M3 starts at almost $10,000 cheaper than the M4. It starts at just under 161,000 Australian dollars. And that comes with a slightly detuned inline six twin turbo engine, pumping out 353 kilowatt of power and 550 newton meters of torque. But you can get that one with a manual, which you can't for this competition spec that I'm driving. The M3 competition comes with more power at 375 kilowatt of power and more torque at 650 newton meters of torque. And that will set you back around about 175,000 Australian dollars. But the car I'm driving here today, just like the M4, has been optioned with the M Carbon package, which includes a carbon roof, wing mirrors, bits at the front, bits at the rear. You also get beautiful gold carbon ceramic brakes and carbon bucket seats, which are just incredible. And that, ladies and gents, is already a win for the BMW M3 because across the board, it is about 5,000 Australian dollars cheaper than the M4. When you're spending that much money, it doesn't really matter anyway, but still, it's a win. Excuse me here while I give it some M carbon sauce. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Oh man. Now the BMW M3 does come with an eight speed ZF automatic torque converter transmission. It ditches the old dual clutch, but this torque converter is, is honestly just incredible. ZF make the best torque converter transmissions out there, changed my mind. I used to have a six speed in my Ford Falcon U. Fun fact, obviously nothing like this one here. Just put your foot down. <laughs> it just, it just goes, it just goes. Upshifts, seamless, downshifts, seamless. And you can actually control how vicious you want to be attacked by your transmission. You've got a little dial here with three levels of selectable, how much you want to punch it how much you want it to punch you, I should say, in the back of the head. You won't be doing any of the punching here. Now, the M3 is rear-wheel drive, which means that you can <laughs> lose the back end like that. Oh. But because this is purpose-built on a 50-50 perfect weight distribution platform, it means that this thing handles just incredibly. There is literally no better rear-wheel drive car that I have driven. It is just so stable, so planted, of course, it does come with some great tires on it, which, which really do help put, put down the power. But that's just it. It can put down the power without needing an all-wheel drive system. Although for the first time ever, the M3 and M4 are offered in all-wheel drive. They're coming to Australia later this year. So I'll get my hands on that. Make sure you subscribe so you can see that one. But honestly, you don't need it. The power is sent through to a limited slip differential at the rear electronically controlled and it just handles the power immaculately. Of course, you want to see that in action. So let's do a little bit of a launch control. The zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles per hour is... Oh my God, it's, I can't. It's 3.9 seconds, closer to 3.6 seconds. It's not struggling to speak, <laughs> struggling to speak. Now we will come back to how it drives a bit later. For now, I wanna talk about how it looks. The BMW shares the same face as the BMW M4, and that means that it has a totally different front, effectively, from the standard 3 Series. It is a very, very controversial grill. People either love it or they hate it. I'm on record saying I like it, I do but I totally understand why some people don't. Honestly, I just give credit to BMW for actually being different and not being a cookie cutter, pumping out the same thing like the 911. Anyway, up front, yes, is a giant, giant grill, and yep, I like it, you might not, whatever. It certainly is very aggressive looking and seriously looks like it will eat anything else it sees. The headlights here are the BMW laser headlights and they are just so damn good. They are matrix 
LED headlights, which means that they can blank out part of their beams for oncoming traffic. Of course, they are extremely bright, low beam, high beam, and their daytime running lights look really cool, I think. It's just really nice. On top of the grille are these cutouts, which are super aggressive. And of course, you have heaps of aero across the front, all very real, all very functional. The side is where the real differences lie between the M3 and the M4. See, the M3 is a practical family sedan. You, of course, have four doors instead of two, and no, they're not as beautiful, they're not frameless doors, but they're totally fine. And it is simply an iconic look. I love the way the M3 looks from the side because it's almost like the ultimate coolest sleeper ever, but it's not a sleeper, but it kind of is. I don't know how to describe it. It's just incredible. Now take a look at the wheels. They are the classic double spoke M wheels, 20 inch at the rear, 19 inch at the front. They are just so beautiful and they suit the character of this M3 so much. Within them, of course, are the gold brake calipers, the carbon ceramics, again, just stunning, especially with this like deep metallic blue paint. Man, it is gorgeous from the side. And then the rear is also really cool because unlike the M4, which has the same rear as a standard four series, kind of, you know, there's some, there's some diffusers and whatnot going on. The M3 has a body kit on it compared to a standard 3 Series. It is so wide and fat and juicy and beautiful. I want one! I'm, I'm honestly in love with the rear of the M3. It's just so cool. It's like, it's not trying too hard. It's, it's like well different from the front, but it's just beautiful and subtle-ish. Subtle-ish, I think is the way to describe it. You have your carbon boot lip spoiler up top. You have like a ducktail spoiler design for the rear. The M3 badge is just iconic. The tail lights are pretty cool. They're actually a little bit shorter than the 4 Series, and I think I prefer them just a little bit more. But down the bottom is a big, meaty diffuser. Carbon, of course, with this carbon package. But even bigger are the tailpipes, the quad exhaust back there, which sound just insane. Take a listen. <laughs> What do you guys think looks better? The BMW M3 or the BMW M4? Me personally, I just, I love the iconic look of the M3. The M4 is a beautiful car, but there's just something about that four-door sedan look that, that gets me. Anyway, now I'm gonna move on to the interior, but before we do, if you haven't, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell, and you can see as soon as I release awesome new car reviews like this every single week. And while you're down there, please do hit that like button. It really, really helps the channel out. Thank you. Alrighty, the interior. Now, this is the spoiled brat in me, but I preferred the yellow Yas interior I had in the BMW M4. Just because of how outlandish it was, it really did suit the character of that bright green M4. This one has almost an identical interior except for some door paneling that's different. And also, of course, it's white. And I don't really like this white interior because it's already marked. And this car's done like 2,000 kilometers, nothing. And it's got like marks and stains on the seats already, which is a shame. But anyway, it is a fully merino leather interior. Everywhere you touch is just beautiful and gorgeous and soft and yeah, covered in one of the nicest leathers you can buy. In fact, there's so much leather everywhere, I almost feel bad for the cows. But it really is just the most robust, well-built interior compared to all of its peers. Zero rattles, zero squeaks, everything is so solid and well put together. Excuse me here while I give it some of that uh, sweet, juicy sauce. Ah! Not only do you get leather everywhere, you get carbon absolutely everywhere. The center console is a piece of art in itself. And of course it is carbon. You have carbon up on the dash and on the steering wheel. But you can change that out to other things if you want, other trims, but don't. The carbon's the way to go. Other nice touches too, look at the seat belts. They are just gorgeous. The gear selector is beautiful with the M logo embossed into it. You've got the tri-color stitching that wraps around it perfectly. And it feels so good to hold. I love holding this knob. And of course you have the M3 badge down there. 
Very cool. It feels like a super premium, awesome place to be, as it should for a $200,000 car, but it fills the part. In terms of ergonomics and practicality, the steering wheel is tilting and telescoping, of course, and the seats are adjusting in like a billion different ways. And you can inflate the side bolsters to really hug you in, which they do a pretty good job of anyway. Just have a look at them. In terms of storage spaces, two cup holders in the center, two more in the doors. The door pins are actually quite a large size. The center armrest, again, covered in this beautiful merino leather, and it feels just so good, but it has plenty of space within it too. And the glove box is a great size. And then up front, you have a USB-A port, you have a 12 volt socket, and within the armrest, you have a USB-C port. Very modern. Oh, and of course, you have a wireless charging pad there too. These seats, these carbon bucket racing seats are just nuts. First of all, look at the back of them. They have this beautiful carbon weave to them. And yes, of course, it is real carbon. The best view is by far from the back, <laughs> just, just staring at these seats. But even from the front, even though they look quite scary, to be honest, they do really look like extreme bucket seats. They're not scary. In fact, they're extremely comfortable and genuinely one of the most comfortable seats I have ever sat in. And I'm not a particularly small person. As a thicker person, I'm amazed. They really guide your legs in. You do have this weird hump in the center. It kind of feels like you've got your phone in between your legs, but it doesn't really matter. And after spending a couple weeks in this and, and also the M4, I can tell you that they are some of my favorite seats ever. The only other seats I've loved this much were in the Nissan Leaf <laughs> because it just had amazing seats. And also the M3 logo, it does light up at night time. It's just so premium. I should say, of course, they are leather and Alcantara and they're heated. God, there's a lot to these seats. There's also a lot to this fat M steering wheel. It is just gorgeous. It of course feels absolutely phenomenal in the hands. It's made of beautiful leather and it has the awesome tri-color stitching wrapping around it too. As I said, you have carbon fiber all across the steering wheel and these paddle shifters are just amazing. Carbon fiber behind them, you have this like red texture to them and they just feel so good to play with. Then you have M1 and M2. Those are your driving modes and you can customize them to however you want. You can change how responsive the engine is and change the transmission between automatic and manual mode and then three modes within each. You can change the adaptive dampers, you can change the steering feel, you can change the braking feel. And the M3 is one of the only cars in the world that you can do that. And then you can turn off traction control and change it between 10 different levels of traction. It's just incredible. Now back to the steering wheel and you'll notice a button with a car, a steering wheel and two lines. That is your adaptive cruise control and it also turns on your lane centering assist. So yes, this car can pretty much drive itself, which makes it a perfect daily driver. Adaptive cruise control will take you to a stop and it will start you up again. You don't have to touch anything and the lane centering is amongst the best in the business. And I won't go into it, but you've got every safety system under the sun as well. Now moving on to the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. It's a very, very good system. It's not the most customizable out there. On the left-hand side, you have your speedometer. On the right-hand side, you have your tachometer. It does go backwards. I don't care, but some people do. Within the tachometer is a little display that you can cycle between different menus. And then in the center, you can display either your maps or you can display the assisted driving screen. It is absolutely incredible and shows you everything that's going on around you. Very cool. You also get a heads up display in front of you that does change when you press M mode and that also changes the digital gauges. So this really cool look. The 10.25 inch infotainment display is also absolutely incredible. Very sharp, responsive to the touch. It runs on the latest iDrive system. And of course it is extremely functional. You have digital radio, navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Now you can control it as a touch screen or you can use the iDrive control knob down in the center with the buttons around it. Regardless of how you use it, it is one of the best systems out there. I love it. Ooh, and running off it is the Harman Kardon sound system. Sounds incredible. In terms of rear seats, this is where the M3 shines. First of all, the doors open like 90 degrees. It's very easy to get in and get out. But unlike the M4, you actually have three seats back there. Excuse me here while I give it some of that sauce. Oh my God. Ah, oh, what was I talking about? Yes, the seats. You have three seats back there, better than the M4. It is the same merino leather as up front. In terms of space back there, I'm five foot 11, plenty of leg room, head room, and toe room. You also get climate control vents back there and a third climate zone too, with a couple of USB-C ports to keep your modern children modern happy. So yes, the M3 is of course a bit more practical in the rear, 
than the M4, and as is the boot. The boot is 480 liters. That is a lot of space, and you could fit so much back there. Again, a family sedan. So let's just talk about how it drives then, and my God, it drives so well. Now, just like you would expect, the M3 handles. Yes! Oh, the M3 handles incredibly well. Compared to a standard 3 Series, you have stiffer adaptive suspension. You've of course got a lowered ride height and you have more camber on the wheel. So you just have this incredible amount of grip. So it doesn't matter what you do, even if you're launching it. Jesus. Oh, this car has so much grip to it. It's got got so much grip to it and it's rear wheel drive. Honestly, I have just lost my entire train of thought. So um, uh, I think I was talking about how, how well it handled. It is just incredible. It's got 50-50 weight distribution and was built on a 50-50 weight distribution platform. Even the 320i comes with 50-50 perfect balanced weight distribution. You truly don't need the all-wheel drive, although I suspect the all-wheel drive will be even faster with the all-wheel drive grip. Steering is incredibly heavy. If you don't like heavy steering, don't buy the M3, though I suspect if you're buying the M3 or even the M4 for that matter, you are expecting a pretty mean sports car. And yes, that means pretty stiff handling, which is exactly what you want out of any sports car. The way you turn this car, it goes. So you better be sure that you know what you're doing when you turn the steering wheel. Now, if you do want to be a bit more comfortable at times, you can put the car into its comfiest settings. That slackens off the suspension, it slackens off the steering just a little bit. And the engine and the transmission turn into a car that you just like you've never driven before. It's a totally different beast and it is so comfortable. As I said earlier, this thing can make the perfect daily driver, especially with its assisted driving features. Enough comfort, that's not what we're here for. We're here for driving the M3. The BMW M3 is a beast a total beast and it is simply amazing 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 it is the best driving car out of all of its competitors there is no doubt zero none so the question is is it worth it and how does it compare to the m4 well as i said in the beginning of this video compared to the m4 this thing is a little bit cheaper not much when you're spending this much money 5,000 is nothing, but it is just substantially more practical having an extra two doors and an extra seat. I think it looks better too. It's a personal preference, but you know, you have the really cool body kit on it that the 4 Series doesn't get. And it's more practical in other areas like the boot. In my opinion, the M3 is a better car, even though the M4 is effectively the same car. You're paying a little bit less, but you're getting a little bit more. But I can say, if you're in the market for a family sedan, nuts bag, then the M3 is probably the car for you. And I'm going to give it one last bit of the juicy sauce. <laughs> oh. But what do you guys think of the BMW M3? Is it a car that you love or you hate? How do you think it compares to the F series? I'm curious. Let me know down in the comment section below. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more cool car reviews just like this and hit that notification bell. And while you're down there, like the video, please. It really helps the channel out. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next week.